Mark Sargent is one of the most famous flat earthers on the planet. Yes, planet. And if you ask the average person, they probably would recognise him if they saw a photo of him. But what happens when he decides to debate an astrophysicist live on stage? Well, quite a lot actually, and it doesn't quite go as well as he would hope. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of this video today, Tube Magic. Now, Tube Magic helps YouTubers succeed on YouTube with the power of AI. A Tube Magic was made by YouTuber Matt Parr, who runs the Make Money Matt channel and 12 other channels. He's been doing YouTube since he was 14 years old. And actually, a lot of huge YouTubers are using this tool. Now, Tube Magic can do keyword research, which allows you to sort by search volume, competition, and magic score, which automatically finds the best keywords for video ideas. But that's not all. It can also write scripts and scripts outlines using AI and generate AI video ideas based on any channel. Now, Tube Magic will also optimize your videos instantly by placing unlisted video links and it will generate titles, descriptions, and optimized tags. To try it out completely for free, click the link in the description. Thank you to Tube Magic for sponsoring this video. Right, on with today's video then, which as I said earlier, is from the infamous Mark Sargent. He is debating an astrophysicist live on stage. And we're gonna join the debate about 20 minutes in after the pleasantries and intros, when the host asks Mark Sargent about NASA. And they so militarized the space. the astronauts who have gone up there and walked around and we saw them walking around. Were right. they walking on flat earth or around earth? They were walking on a sound stage in an air force base somewhere. Are you serious? Oh, absolutely. You believe that? I don't. I just find it hard <laughs> that that many people are that unethical. Now this is a fantastic point. Now I once had Michael Butter, a conspiracy expert on the Simon Dan podcast. Now he said someone had actually done the maths regarding keeping a monumental secret. Now it turns out that the number of people involved in the lunar landings in NASA was so high that it is almost a statistical impossibility that it would have been kept secret all this time. You know, I mean, well, I, especially when you go back and you look at Neil Armstrong as he's and, and the, the astronauts that are going there and they're talking about scripture and seeing yeah. God's majesty and creation that then come back and say, oh, I've got to lie about this. That's inconsistent oh, with uh, Christian uh, care. I agree. I agree. And but at the same time, look, they were military. I mean, what heck, one of the Apollo astronauts was a lieutenant general. Actually, Neil Armstrong was not serving military when he joined NASA. He was a civilian test pilot. I feel bad for Neil. Neil became a recluse after it was all over. He drank and, and just did not make any public appearances. I think all the Apollo astronauts, which is why the, the guys now, you know, they signed the disclosure agreements and they don't have to do anything. I think the Apollo astronauts wanted to be heroes. Why would they want to deceive us though? What would be the purpose of that? Power, control, well, nothing. How are they gaining power by deceiving No, no, us? retaining power. More meaning if you've built up a civilization, especially since Copernicus, that is you build a civilization on science. Look, science has been the trendy religion for 500 years. Science is not religion. It's about as far away from religion as you can get. Now, Ricky Gervais said it best. If you destroy every single science book ever created and every single religious book ever created, in 500 years, the science will come back almost exactly as it was before. The religion, probably not. They have been beating all the other five religions over the head with, a, with textbooks for that long. And then all of a sudden you're gonna come along and say, oh yeah, by the way, you might be wrong about the biggest thing. Because remember, up until NASA went up you know, in 1958, I'm sorry, NASA was formed in 1958, but up until the Apollo missions, we didn't get up high enough to actually see what this really looked like. Actually, we had images from far back as 1946. No, obviously we couldn't get high enough then to see the entire Earth, but you could certainly see curvature. So until you look, what do you really know? And all of a sudden you're gonna tell people this isn't it? That undermines the, the scientific pillars. And then you're gonna- the, but, but I mean, to, to, to speak to that, at least, I mean, you know, I, I would agree there are some people who will be manipulated that way, but right. you look throughout Christian history and there are people who are willing to die yes. for what they say. And, yeah. and to find that there are no Christians that work in the space program, and you'll find that the space program was replete with Christians, right. but there are none of them that are willing to stand up 
You're going to be. That's looking. hard to. That I, is just I, really hard I, to I, buy. I, I, no, it's a great point that the astrophysicist says here. Most Christians have a very strong moral compass. It is extremely unlikely that there be no deathbed confessions if indeed the lunar landing had been faked. I know, I know, and I trust me when I say I wish, you know, I. I wish people had more conviction to be the whistleblowers. Now that stuttering means that he knows the astrophysicist made a good point and he hasn't really got an answer to it. But who are you going to go to? Who are you going to go to? Are you going to go to the media? You're going to go to the New York Times? You're going to go to CNN? You're going to go to Fox? I, I, I guess where I'm going with this is, or what I would, it's, I, I see that you could have a conspiracy dictated by force and that there are some people who are going to kowtow to the power. Sure. But when you look at what Christianity does and has done throughout history, right. there have been far more onerous powers with far more detrimental consequences. I'm pretty sure none of the astronauts would have lost their life for speaking out. Ooh, or possibly they- huh, Mark isn't happy about that comment, is he? He seems to think that an astronaut would have lost their lives if they decided to be a whistleblower. But even if, they, even if they would- High, high treason. Even if they would, yeah. there are people throughout history that have shown themselves willing to do that because of what what Christ requires. I, so the fact that there are none of those in the space program is just I, I incredulous. Not, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. I am not saying that there aren't some of those people. Of course, there's some fantastic Christians out there. Of course, but there are layers. Of, look, they've had 60 years to, to put this thing in place. As far as you know, put the safeguards in place. Monitor phone calls, monitor emails, and of course, they've got leverage on everybody. I mean, look, I'm lucky. I didn't have, get married or have kids. So many people. I mean, all you have to do is find your pressure points and then squeeze. You know, your spouse, your kids, your relatives your legacy, they can find a way to shut you up. Neil, uh, Neil Armstrong was a perfect example. When he, you know, he finally went on stage with Bill Clinton and said, you know, Will, you know, you've got so much more to do with this cryptic message if you can remove one of truth's protective layers. No one had any idea what he was talking about. And that was in the late 90s, I think, or early 2000s. Right, let's look at the whole quote, shall we, Mark? There are great ideas undiscovered. Breakthroughs available for those that can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. This is clearly a comment about science in general, and that the more we delve into something, the more we find out. Quote mining is a classic flurf tactic. Must do better, Mark. Let's move on a bit. So we are traveling around in a ball instead of around a ball. Yes, That's but, the, but the compass works the same way, actually. How come there have been no accidents? <laughs> That's just it. Antarctica is uh, when you get even like what going out to the edge and crashing. Yeah, hit, hit inside, yeah. Oh, because Antarctica just screams go away. I mean the <laughs> yes, because it is an inhospitable environment. Because it's extremely cold. Because it is in the far south of the planet at high elevations, covered in a thick layer of ice. Nature does a pretty good job itself without humans needed to make it more unappealing. The continent once once you get past the icebergs and you know the the shoreline is what 200 300 feet of sheer ice. Then the plateau, which is Antarctica, goes up to 14,000 feet. There's no uh, indigenous land, uh, plant life, no animal life. The place just screams, go away. And the compass... So, so what do you do with the uh, science bases that are on the South Pole? The military science bases? No, it's not military. Oh They're, my God, come on, man. No, I, I, I work with people <laughs> who do high energy gamma ray astron or high they energy are astronomy. There. Everything is authorized by the, by the governments down there. And by that, I mean the Antarctic Treaty, which was put in place in 1959, says no private corporation ever, no matter how much money you have, no matter how much clout you have, can set up shop there ever. It is actually against international law to conduct military activities on Antarctica. There are over 40 stations there, all owned by different countries. For any reason. In fact, it's not even up for debate so, until 2021. So the, the South Pole Neutrino Observatory. That yes, fine. Measures, so that's, that's on the South Pole. Well, you want, it's on Antarctica. How about that? So all, uh, again, this is where I struggle with there's scientists down there. I, I work course. with scientists, and I know scientists are always about how can I discover something that nobody knows. Sure. So these scientists that are very bright, Nobel caliber scientists right. are knowingly telling No, me, no, no, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. If they're, go, if they're down there on a base, get a member, the edge of this, the Antarctic coastline, however t long it takes to get to the barrier, because this isn't to scale, obviously, because remember, Admiral Byrd flying his uh, uh, Navy planes for 30 years couldn't freaking find it. Well, he did. He found most of it. He just said there are a lot more than we know of. And there was back then. Uh, they, yes, most of their stuff is close to the coastline or what you would call the, the, the South Pole. South Pole's hundreds of miles inland. Yeah, that's not that far. Not by comparison. I mean, they could have done that in planes in the freaking 40s. Would I'm the saying military that, prevent the scientists from knowing this? 
Are they? Are you standing? Oh yeah. If, if it's signed, it's signed. It's, it, they ask that. Hey, can I take a plane and just start heading out that way? Yeah, they would eventually stop. You don't them. Incorrect. There have been several polar circumnavigations of Earth. Several. Because some of what you're talking about, I'm actually building an experiment right now where we're going to fly a balloon around the Antarctic continent. Cool. So, in your view and my view, that's a very different journey. Yes, it is. It would be where extremely long. It would be extremely long. Right. W roughly what time scale are you talking about there? How fast does it go? It's w whatever the winds go. I don't know. Even if you did jet stream winds at 110, 120, it would take a long, long, long time. I don't know. Okay. It, but but it, would, it would take at least, at, least five, at least five times longer, maybe even ten times longer. And of course, we've already debunked this before. The Antarctic boat race, which circumnavigates Antarctica completely, does so in times that would be impossible if the ice wall went round the entire edge of the disc. I'm going to stop here because honestly, these are some of the worst arguments I've ever heard from Flat Earth, and even Mark himself. And at this point, he's just talking nonsense, continually. Dear, oh dear. What do you all think of the performance there from Mark and the astrophysicist? How did they do? Let me know in the comments below. For now though, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're on that march to 600,000 uh, and I've got something special planned when we get there. And of course, if you really enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button too. It'd be very much appreciated. Just enough time to once again thank Tube Magic for sponsoring today's video. Uh, to try it out completely free, all you gotta do is click the link in the description. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session where this time I'm gonna be finding all of you subscribers in a geolocation challenge. See you then.